Hello and welcome everyone to yet another repair video. It's going to be about the Samsung MM-C530D which is a little home audio system cons consisting of two speakers and this amplifier slash CD DVD player and so on. And the issue it's having is it's not booting up. It's just when you plug it in it has this flashing blue light and it's not coming on. And right now I have it powered from my variable auto transformer here and you can see the power it's actually drawing so it's going up and down all the time so it's obviously stuck in some kind of boot loop and it cannot boot properly so we're gonna take it apart and see what's the problem of course before you take it apart make sure you unplug the power cord and leave it unplugged for at least some hours because there might still be some dangerous vo dangerous voltages inside even when you unplug the power cord so before you open the device I would like to remind you of this warning sign on the back which is there for a reason. So seriously, do not open this device unless you really know what you're doing. You're doing it at your own risk. There might be main voltages still inside and they might be lethal. So to start taking the device apart, unscrew all the four screws here on the back. Then what you will have to do is to slide the side panels to the back. So start with this and then just pull it firmly to the back and then you can take it off. Repeat the same for the other side panel and then turn the unit around and you will find that here in this corner there is another screw that we have to undo. Then what you can do is slide the complete top cover to the side, so in this case to the right side, but before you pull it off make sure that there are two cables underneath here that still hold the top cover on. So just pull out this black lead or maybe use a screwdriver to assist and then also pull off this flat flex cable here and then the top cover is completely off. And now you can see the main board inside this unit which we actually have to get out. So to be able to do that I would first recommend to remove all the connectors that go right on that board so start with the mains power cord back here then there is the fan connector and then over here there are two more flat flex cables you can just pull them upwards and then all the connectors are off then we have to go back to the back of the unit and here you want to remove the two screws next to the input connectors and to the speaker terminals Then what you have to do is rotate the unit around and unscrew this screw on this side and the respective one on the other side. Now you should be able to pull the whole front of the unit off by bending it a little to the sides and then also you'll find this retention clip on the bottom. Now the complete front of the unit can be removed. And now the last thing you'll have to do to get the main board out is to unscrew all the screws that actually hold the main board to the casing. So these are just these four screws around the outside. And then you can start to pull the main board to the front. You'll see there is this sticker here that will hold the unit, the, the main board in. You try to, you can try to keep that by bending the board over like this and then just peeling the sticker off like so. Now that the main board is out, we can actually start to address the problem here. And the problem with this unit, as in many consumer electronics, is that the electrolytic capacitors you see everywhere here, they age quite a lot and they get bad over time. So what you have to do here is replace at least all the faulty capacitors and if you really want to do it properly you should go in there and replace all the big capacitors here and also the two ones here and the two ones in here because these are all in the power supply section and these are going to be stressed quite a lot. The others around here are actually from a better brand as well as this mains input capacitors so you don't have to worry about these but as I said if you want to do a proper job you should replace all the electrolytic capacitors inside this area 
So all the capacitors you want to replace are these four, which are each 680 microfarads at 50 volts, these two, which are 3300 microfarads at 42 volts, these two 1000 microfarads at 10 volts, 2200 microfarads at 10 volts, and then these two with 50 volts and 47 microfarad. If, however, you don't want to go to the trouble to change all the capacitors I showed, you are basically good to go just replacing these three. So this one with 2200 and the other two with 1000 microfarads at 10 volts. You can also just get three pieces of 10 volts and 2200 microfarads. And this is also what I'm just going to show you today. So the others, I would also recommend you to change them, but you don't have to to get the unit back and running. But since these three already failed, it's likely that the others are going to fail as well in some time. So if you want to really keep this unit up and running for several other years, you should also go in there and change these and also the two small ones down there. So the first thing I'm going to do when I want to desolder these capacitors is I'm going to add some new fresh solder to every pin of these capacitors to be able to get them out easier afterwards. And I've marked all the capacitors I'm going to change with a circle here on the board. So one difficulty here is that this board is double-sided and has quite large surface areas of copper. So you're going to need quite a lot of heat to actually get the devices out. So I cannot really go in there and just use a solder sucker to clean up both holes. But instead I go in there and just heat up one leg of the capacitor, bend it with my other hand, then I change the leg bend to the other direction and if you repeat that process once or twice the capacitor will be out and then you can clean up the holes afterwards. So here you have the three capacitors I removed. This one with 2200 microfarads, 10 volts, and the other two with just 1000 microfarads, 10 volts of Samwa brand, so not the best capacitors and this is why they fail so early. So once these capacitors are out, we're actually getting towards the most difficult bit of this repair, and that is to get the holes clean. The problem is that there is so much copper around, and it's a double-sided board, that you really gonna need a lot of heat to heat up the entire solder left inside the hole to get it out. Since there are no components attached anymore, so the capacitors are gone now, you can actually turn up the heat on your soldering iron like all the way to 450 degrees Celsius. Then, as before, apply some fresh amount of solder. And then really just keep your soldering iron on there for several seconds to really get that heat across the board. So as you can see the second hole here, hole here actually worked out quite nice. On the other however we lost the pad on this side, which is not a problem since actually the electrical contact is on the other side, so we will have to come back to that later. Yeah, and these two also actually worked out quite nice. So two more over here. And whenever you see that you were not able to get the solder out from one side, just turn the board upside down and start from the other side again. And then that should usually work out better. And there we have it. With a little bit of trickery also, this hole is now clean. Now we can put in the replacement capacitors. As I said in this video, I'm just going to replace these three. And as a replacement part, I chose for all these three 2200 microfarads and 16 volts. So since this is a power supply, more voltage and more capacity is always good as well. And they will fit the footprint exactly, so I have three of these lying around. They are also not exactly top quality, so if you really go and um, buy replacement parts, you should watch out for actually good quality capacitors like Nippon Chemicon, Europe Chemicon, Panasonic or some of these brands. However, I have some of these lying around here. I'm not going to bother to order some new, so I'm just going to put these in. When you put in capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, make sure they have on this one side the marking, so this minus and the 
white line, so they correspond to this pin here. So this pin is the negative lead. And on the board as well, you see this white marking, so one of the halves of the symbol is also white. So put that negative lead into there. So this is the board now with the three new replacement capacitors inside, which I'm now going to solder in place. So do note that I still had the soldering iron on 450 degrees Celsius even when resoldering the devices. The reason is again because of this large thermal masses that you just have to get the heat to the board. And of course that's not so nice for the devices themselves, for the capacitors, so make sure just to put the soldering iron for some seconds, not more than 10 seconds, to really get that pin hot and then be over with it. So this is the board now with three replacement capacitors soldered on. And now we can start reassembling the unit. So the first thing here is of course to slide the main board back in place. So you start with the main board like this and then you bend these leads away and you push it to the back making sure that you don't squeeze in any cables. Make sure that every of these connectors actually matches up with the corresponding hole on the back side. And now you should see that all the four screw holes align. And then you can start screwing these four silver screws back in. Once you've done that, you can reattach the two flat flex cables on the side. Just put them in the slot and then just firmly but controlledly press down until they both are in. Then the fan connector, it's only able to go in one way. You can also secure that by this little retention arm here. And then last but certainly not least, the mains power cord, it can only go in one way. Now we can put this little sticker here back. It should still have some stickiness to it. This is not really necessary, but it's still nice to put it back on. Then we can put the front back on. So remember there were these three retention clips, one here and two other at the sides. So first align it like this. And then just push it back. Like this until all the three retention clips clip in. Once this is done you can reassemble the top cover. This is going to be a little tricky since you have to put it back on while putting the two connectors back on. So first you might want to put it like this. Then with the other hand put the flat flex cable back in. I cannot really show you this on camera, I'm sorry. And then put the black lead next to that on the single pin. And then without moving the top cover too much, put the dents in the front in the slots and then slide the whole thing to the right until it's even with the sides. Turn the whole thing around. Now before you put the side covers back on, make sure that we unscrewed some screws here on the sides. So there's actually two on this side first one down there and the other one up here holding in the top cover and then on the other side there's just one. Now you can put the two side covers back on. The one that has the two stickers on it has to go on this side and the other one on the other side they won't fit the other way around. And then you can basically start screwing all the leftover screws back in. So four to the actual sides and then the others to the connectors that we unscrewed earlier. The screws are all the same so you don't have to worry about keeping them in different places. 
just make sure that the silver ones go on the inside just because it looks nicer and all the black ones go on the outside. So that should have been it. Let's plug it back in, see if we fixed it. And sure enough, we actually did. Now it comes on, looks all right. Let's connect up the speakers. And sure enough, with the two speakers connected, we now have a fully working unit again. So there you go. So this is it for this video. I hope this information was helpful for some of you. I hope that some of you are now also able to repair their units and use them for some more time. Thanks for watching.